Pastor Warren and beautiful First Lady Pam, thank you for inviting us here. I count it such a privilege to be here. I love this church. I love you all so much. We, will, we are lifetime friends. And what a pleasure it is for Pam. We will be getting up early in the morning, making our trek back down to the old suffocating I can't breathe Gulf Coast. <laughs> wow, this is just beautiful. This is going to be an impartation night. And uh, there's so many ways I could go, but I... Uh, if you want those CDs... See Pam at the end of the uh, service tonight. That special song of my granddaughter, that's that's on the Grace CD, okay? Uh, a lot of other great stuff. So I want to talk to you for just a few moments, and I, I, there's a few things I want to say here, and then we're going to begin to pray, okay? Uh, thank you, Adam. And we're going to begin to pray, uh, but I want to talk to you, uh, establish a couple of things that I think will help you, and uh, very much. Now, when I when I talk from this Word of God, uh, I've lived it, I've experienced it, okay. And uh, if you ever hear a pastor or an evangelist saying, "I've got a message from God," if it's a real message from God, he's lived it first. And he's, it's been preached to him before he preaches it to you, right? So there was a few things that I want to give you tonight, and then we're going to pray and release the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And if you've never been baptized in it tonight, I want to see you filled with it tonight. So you can, so you can do the work of the kingdom. Does that make sense? Amen. So you just, it's not about just getting the Holy Ghost to, you know, say we had 80 get the Holy Ghost tonight. There's got to be purpose. Amen. You know, he said, you will receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. Okay. And, and that power is, is got to be a reason for it. Okay. And I'm going to share a couple things that, that I experienced that, uh, that's why I just keep on going. Okay? Hello, boys and girls. What a great looking crew. You guys are, I want to pray for you tonight, okay? I want to release glory over you. Just release glory over you. Because I love you and I believe in you. And, and uh, I just want to release gl glory. Because, you know, uh, some of you are going to be doctors and lawyers, uh, preachers, teachers. It doesn't, doesn't matter what field you're going in. You're still a minister to build his kingdom. Amen? Amen. Is that good? So I'm just so glad you all are here. Just You all just listen so great. I'll try not to be too long. Well, I won't be too long. How about that? I won't try, I won't. And but don't go to sleep on me. Stay awake. <laughs> now this, this is gonna be good. Okay, so first spiritual dynamic I want you to see is about uh and I know you know this story. You can relate to it. Remember uh remember Zacharias, remember him, Luke, the first chapter, right? Zacharias was a what? He was a priest in the temple of the Lord. And he was praying a special prayer. He was praying for his wife. What was her name? Elizabeth. They wanted a child, a baby. He prayed for it to happen. He even prayed to God. God, give me a boy. 
So I'm praying for a child, and I'm even praying for a boy. Now, that's, I like that. Okay. One day, he was ministering in the temple, the Bible says. And an angel appeared to him. And the angel said, he said to Zacharias, now watch this now. Your prayer has been heard. Whose prayer? Your prayer. Let me just stop and just kind of interject something from that story. One of our greatest issues that we have with ourselves is we pray, but we don't believe we receive while we pray. You know, it's more of a religious stuff that we do, isn't it? We really don't believe our prayers are going to be answered, though. Right? But we pray because the Bible says to pray. We, we pray because we're taught to pray. But it's never really connected with us spiritual and neurologically. There's power in prayer. And the moment you open up your mouth or even think the thought of prayer, God feels it. God senses it. God hears it. God is in the beautiful business of answering prayer. God wants to answer your prayer more than you want your prayer answered. This is just simple tonight, but this is life changing. I'm telling you, because this is what I received from God many years ago. God wants to heal you more than you want to be healed. He wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. God cares about you more than you care about yourself. See, you have to get this paradigm in order to really get in the glory of prayer. Does that make sense? Because I've learned so much from this little true story of Zacharias. He started the wheels turning in heaven. God didn't. Zacharias did. Zacharias prayed for Elizabeth to have a child. He wanted a boy. But when the angel appeared in, in the temple while he was ministering, Zacharias just like uh, he, he fainted. He got, in a, he got stunned. You know, just like, what? No, no, he didn't faint. He just got mind blown. The angel said, your prayer has been heard. And he said, he even told him what he would pray. He said, you've been praying for your wife to have a child. Well, God sent me here to tell you your prayer has been heard. Can you imagine if you ever had that experience? Would that be incredible? And, and he said, your wife is going to have a child and it's going to be just the way you want it. It's going to be a boy. And it's going to be named John. And he's going to have an incredible kingdom anointing. I'm paraphrasing. And when the angel was through prophesying and telling him that his prayer was heard. Look at the mode. How is this going to happen? I'm old. She's old. I'm too old to have a child, give a birth. I'm too old to be a father. I'm too, she's too old. Can you imagine doubting the answer to your own prayer? And that's exactly what he was doing. He started the whole ball rolling and God heard the prayer the moment he asked. And then God says to his number one ranking angel, Gabriel, he could have just sent, the low ranking angle, angel, a private. But no, no, he sent Gabriel, the one who's going to blow the trumpet. He says, go tell that Zacharias down there that his prayer has been heard and there's a baby on the way. If that had been me, I would have been slain out, drunk in the Holy Spirit, 
uh, it would have been quite a, quite a reaction to have an angel appear and tell me my prayer has been heard. He doubted his own prayer. And, and then the Lord even reached out with him in mercy because the Lord wanted him since it was his idea to pray this prayer, God wanted him to participate in the nine-month experience of watching this miracle grow. And so the angel, you know, just says, look, I'm, I'm Gabriel. I'm floating. My, I'm not even standing on the floor of this temple. I'm in the... I was sent to prophesy to you. Come on, don't doubt now. <coughs> and he doubted. But here's what I want you to get. God's God. He's sovereign. He doesn't need me or he doesn't need you. If he makes up his mind, he's going to answer your prayer. You're not going to stop him. And that's what happened with Zacharias. God wanted Zacharias to participate because it was his idea to pray the prayer in the first place, Adam. He wanted him to participate, but he couldn't even handle. Oh, he, he was caught. And that's like so many of us. We pray, but we don't believe. We pray, but... God, give me a financial miracle, but we don't believe a financial miracle is going to happen. Lord, we want to have a child, but we really don't believe it. We just pray. That's the easy part. All you have to do is open your mouth and, God, you're God. Lord, I'm just asking. That's easy. See? But we don't believe. And we don't believe that we're going to receive it. Because if we do, we, we would. he said, when you pray, believe that you receive while you pray. And then you just start looking for the manifestation of that prayer that you prayed a month ago. Amen? Amen. But here's what I want to show you. I guess God was really serious about giving them this miracle. Because he didn't walk away. See, we always hear, man, you got to believe her. And that's true. That's, that's one element. And then that's one dynamic. You've got to believe. Uh, uh, prophet Lord, can my unbelief stop? Yeah, it can. Only if God lets it. Because there's that, the first dynamic with God is God in you. His number one choice is to take the prayers that you give to him and then partner with you, take you on the journey and, and let you enjoy the experience so your faith can be built. Let you enjoy the experience of watching the prayer be answered. That's his first will. Working with your faith. Using your faith to create that miracle. Oh, I feel something here tonight. Do you? But, if God, but then God's got another level that he doesn't need anybody. It's called the sovereignty of God. That's when it's God and God alone. That's when God just does the miracle for you, whether you believe it or not. And that's exactly what we learned from Zacharias. Because Zacharias could not accept the answer to his own prayer. It was too ostentatious. It's too, it's beyond, uh, it's too good to be true. But well, you shouldn't have prayed it then. If you're not going to believe the answer to your prayer, don't pray. Sure, I'm not going to make you more spiritual. And then the angel looked at Zacharias, and God goes into his sovereignty. He said, because you did not believe that God's going to do this thing, God says through the angel, I'm still going to do it. But I'm going to do it without your faith. I'm going to do it 
with myself and my own sovereignty. Oh, but here's, here's the consequence of you not believing the answer to your own prayer. It's not going to be very exciting for you. Now, your wife's still going to have the child. It's going to be a boy. It's going to be named John. He's going to be a mighty warrior. But you're not really going to enjoy this journey. Tell you what, for the next nine months, you're going to be mute. Because I'm not going to take a chance on you opening up the mouth again for nine months. Because you already said it's not going to happen. You already said it's too good to be true. You already said that could never happen for us. So I'm just going to close your mouth for the nine months. And you're just going to sit back and watch baby Johnny grow. Isn't that incredible? The ninth month, she has the baby. And it's a boy. And old Zacharias is still mute. Mm. Zacharias, we're so happy for you, Daddy. Mm. He's humiliated. He's embarrassed. He's crushed. But he can't talk. He can't even express himself. Because he disobeyed and he doubted his own prayer. And, and then it came time, the nurse comes in and said, the doctor, we'd like to name the child. We got the little plastic. Got to put a name on the end of that little thing. Any names picked out. Well, then Elizabeth's family speaks up. Or jo uh, no, I think it was Zachariah's side speaks up, and they just they're going to go campaign for, you know, Zachariah's junior. <laughs> you know, you got the in-laws and the in-laws here and the in-laws there. They're going to go at it there. <laughs> He's my grandchild too. I think we got to say. <laughs> <laughs> you come from a family of nineteen kids. I used to absolutely despise my name. I just hated it. I'm thinking, who takes a newborn baby and weighs seven pounds and ten ounces? What's his name? Oh, he's so beautiful. He's so, what's his name? Lloyd. <laughs> I used to, oh. My middle name was Philip. And I promised to God, true story. I went to grade one and grade two and grade three. Couldn't fool them. Teacher said, what's your name? I hated my name. I said, well, my name is Lloyd. Uh, but uh, everybody calls me Philip. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody called me Philip. And she caught on. Yeah. But then, with all due respect, one day I really kind of analyzed the rest of the names of my family. I didn't re and I realized I really didn't come out all that bad. Huh? <laughs> you know, it's not, you know, it's not John. That's a cool name. It's not, you know, Trevor. That's a cool name. You know, Lloyd. But then I'm thinking, I got a brother named Vern. I'm not making fun of you tonight. I'm just having fun with my brothers. And I got a brother named Elmer. Seven, 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 seven pounds and two ounces. He's beautiful. What's his name? Elmer Roy. <laughs> got a brother named Arden. <laughs> Arden. Don't get mad at me. I'm just having fun. Oh, he's so handsome. Look at the hair. Oh, he's three hours old. What's his name? Arden. <laughs> so when that baby was born, Zacharias' baby was born, they said, well, we're going to name it. And Zacharias' family said, I think we ought to name him Zacharias. Zacharias needs somebody. He needs, this, he needs the junior. He needs Zacharias the first. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Zacharias... The one who started the ball rolling, 
who's been deaf, who's been mute for nine months, says, he's learned sign language in nine months. So somebody brings him over a quill, whatever they wrote with back there, and some papyrus, maybe, and he writes because he couldn't speak. He writes, call him John. See, it's never too late. It's never too late to get unmuted. It's never too late to talk again. It's never too late to believe again. You understand? And the moment he wrote, call him John. The Bible says immediately his tongue was loosened and he began to speak. First time in nine months. Hello. Bring me my boy. Grad. He grabbed that little John and the anointing of prophecy began to come on him. And the first thing he did after nine months of not being able to speak was begin to prophesy over his boy, over his boy, over his boy. You understand the power of prayer. And then when you connect it with the power of believing and obeying, obeying. You have the faith for a miracle tonight. You have the faith. The Bible says in Romans 12 and 3, he has given to everyone the, doesn't say I'll measure. If it says I'll measure, you got the wrong version. You got to stick with the original version. The original version says the measure. Because if it had said a measure, that means there'd be a good chance that you might have more faith than I do. Because it's that ah. It's that ah that makes you wonder, ah, does he have more than me? Ah, do I have more than him? But he didn't say he's given to everyone a measure. He's given to everyone the measure. The measure. It's a one size fits all. I don't have more faith than you. You don't have more faith than me. <clears throat> I may use my more. And anything you use, grow. Well, I still got a measure. Just got a little more muscle tone on it. Because I use it. I exercise it. The measure. How much is a measure? Enough. It's enough. You've got enough faith for a miracle. You've got enough faith. If you've been praying, God, make me a billionaire. You've got enough faith for that. Absolutely. Put your works to it. You've got enough faith for it. Am I making sense tonight? Yes. Now, here's what I'm going to show you. Also, you're going to be tested because God, if you're. God wants somebody he can depend on. Somebody that's not wishy-washy, up and down, sleeping and sliding, peeping and hiding. Shouting one night, pouting the next night. <laughs> so he's going to test you. And that's like, I believe it was Matthew 15, I think. Remember Jesus sitting with his disciples? And they're just talking, you know, talking life. He's giving us a revelation. All of a sudden, there's a woman that walks up to him. Remember that? And... She's, he's talking to the disciples and she walks up and she just starts requesting for a miracle. She just says, I've got a daughter that's sick and possessed of devils and, and she needs a miracle. Would you, would you pray for her? Test one. He ignored her. He paid her no attention. Why would Jesus test like that? Because Jesus has to test you. To see if your prayer is authentic. Is it a prayer of faith? Or is it a prayer of feelings? Is your faith real faith? Or is it feeling faith? Well, if I feel it, I'll do it. If I feel it, if I feel it. We talk about being people of faith and we have to feel everything.
Amen? He tested her to see if she's, are you coming by feelings or are you really coming in faith? So I'm going to test you here. Test one, he ignored her. Now, anybody that hadn't had come for a miracle in feelings, you would have already been offended and you would have already failed the test. Because what would have happened to you if you had to come to him and he ignored you, you would say, yeah, not going back to that church. It's just all alike. Yeah, I went up there and that pastor didn't even shake my hand. He shook other people's hands, but not my hand. I went down. He said, come on down for a miracle. And I went down for a miracle. And nobody <laughs> laid their hands on me. Prophesied this one. Prophesied that. Not me. I'm done. I'm done. See? He has to separate those wheat people from the chaff people. <laughs> But there's one thing I know about faith. It will never be denied. It will never be offended. You know what I call faith? In the Bible, there's many graces. There's a grace of giving. There's a grace of worship. There's a grace of patience. There's a grace of humility. These are all graces. But you know what they all have in common? They all can be offended. They all have feelings. Think about it. Oh, she's so patient. She's got that gift of impatience. Yeah, but what are you going to do when patience runs out? Oh, they're so wonderful. They have the gift of giving. Oh, that's good. But giving can be offended too. I know people that have given millions of dollars to the kingdom of God and have found out that it was misused. And they left the church. And they died in their backslidden condition. See, that gift can be offended. So the only, the only grace that can never be offended is faith. Because that's why Paul said in Ephesians 6, he said, above all, take the shield of faith. See, it's your captain grace. It protects all these other nice little graces. That grace of patience, it's protected. That grace of giving, you, you keep it behind the shield of faith. See, faith is just a big old shield. It has no feelings. And that's why you can't offend it. That's why, that's why you'll never be denied of a miracle. And you'll never quit believing. You'll never give up. This woman was tested. I'm just about done, so hang on here. I know it's hot, but I'm about done. And test two. She, when he ignored her, she quit requesting. Because when you go in faith, you know I'm coming in faith. And the moment I speak for a miracle, God hears it. I don't have to remind him of it. I don't have to repeat it again, again, and gone again. See? So what she did then was just magnificent. Faith knows how to maneuver when it's being tested. She just got right down on her knees in front of him and just began to worship him. See, faith will never, ever, ever, ever. It will never be denied. It will make a way where there is no way. It won't allow you to be offended because it can't even feel that offense. <laughs> it will go from being ignored to worship. I worship you, almighty God. There's none like you. Thank you, Jesus. He never even got. He still tested her. While she was down there worshiping, he looks at her out of the corner of his eye and looks down at her. And he goes from ignoring her to calling her a dog. It's not good to take the children's bread from the master's table. She's worshiping him. 
Oh, we couldn't take that. They'd be lawsuits everywhere. I'm telling you, oh, oh my God. Oh, the Me Too movement, we'd be all over this thing. Me too, me too. He did it to me too, Pastor. Did it to me too, Pastor Shane. I just did it to me too. He treated me the same way. Me too, me too. <sighs> Gave me a dirty look. He, I know he don't like me. I know he talks about me. He just... <laughs> oh, that faith of that woman. He called her a dog and... And when he called her a dog, she looked up at him with tears in her eyes and said, yeah, but even the dogs get the crumbs to fall from the master's table. <laughs> in other words, I don't care what you call me. Call me a dog. Call me a cat. Call me a whale. Call me a pig. But I ain't leaving here because you're not going to offend me. I can't even feel it. I can't even sense it because I didn't come here out of the emotions of my hurt and pain. I come here by faith and in the name of Jesus, my daughter's going to be healed. <laughs> when she said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, test over. That's it. Ladies, stand up. You pass with flying colors. In fact, I ain't never seen this kind of faith. Teach a moment to the disciples. Teach a moment to the disciples. Teach a moment to the disciples. Disciples, look at this woman. This is what will build the kingdom of God. This is what will shake the gates of hell. This is what will set the captives free. This is what will bring the latter rain outpouring. When you have a faith that can believe and receive and will never quit believing will not be denied but in the midst of rejection in the midst of ignoring in the midst of name calling she will stand strong go thy way your daughter lives and she went home and there's her daughter healed. Healed. See, once God finds somebody, once he has somebody that he can just say, I can, I can use you. Well, how do you know I can use you? How do you know you can use her, God? Because the faith. Yeah, but she, I don't care about gifts. I don't care about skills. I God's saying, I don't care whether she graduated from university or not. I ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm just looking for somebody to take me at my word. I'm just looking for somebody who will believe me and never, ever give up. Wow. Stand to your feet with me right now. Wow. Anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall. Okay, let's play something you know. That's all right. You, you was too young. You probably weren't even born when we were singing that song. Uh, you know the realm I'm in, so just think of something. I don't care. Just, just go with it. Uh, I'm going to pray for impartation here. Now, understand the prophetic. You will see things, especially after tonight, you will see things manifest in the next coming days. Hallelujah. Unexpected miracles. Uh, don't be surprised the devil shows up. <laughs> yeah. 
but I don't want you to focus on that. You know what you do to the devil? You ignore him. And you call him a dog. But you don't give him the crumbs that fall from the master's table. You rebuke him and command him to leave and he will leave. First thing I want to do in this prayer time tonight is get everybody filled. Now remember what I said because there's a purpose for it. There's a purpose for it. When you, when the Holy Spirit baptizes you, uh, God takes the one member of yourself that could never be tamed and he anoints it. It's called your tongue. And he gives you that heavenly language that only he understands what you're saying. You know why the devil fights and lies about speaking in tongues so much and tries to keep so many religious people from getting it? It's because whenever you speak in tongues, he don't know what you're saying. It's, it's, it's like a private direct line from your soul to the throne of God. Only God knows what that language is speaking. See, as long as, long as you get down and just say, oh, Lord, I just, I need, I need my marriage healed. And made, well, the devil hears that. And guess what he's going to do? He's going to go and make your husband more irritable. Uh, Lord, I need a healing. I need, I got so much pain in my back, Lord. Uh, well, the devil hears you. He says, all right, I'm going to poke you again. You know, I'm going to mess your dreams up, make you restless in the night so you wake up and my body and sleep it on my back. He's going to do all that. Oh, Lord, you know how much I want to be delivered from drugs and, and I want uh, anxiety and depression. The devil heard that. But when you allow the Holy Ghost to pray through you. That's when things change. So everybody, I want you to get the baptism tonight. He said, well, I got it 20 years ago. Well, get it again. Maybe it's about time you went to language school and got a whole new language tonight. Do you know, you know one of the greatest miracles I've ever seen? personally that I experienced with my own Holy Ghost never forget this I was in Beaumont, Texas y'all know where Beaumont is that's where oil started in America I believe oil. in Texas I know it did and Beaumont at this Pentecostal church Brother Trebway and well we had a yeah we were married then right you were there yep this was incredible. So we was having all these miracles. And this, this was on the, the last night of the meeting on a Sunday night. And Brother Trevor had this old building, big old building, the balcony and big high ceiling, little old me out there. And as everybody came down to these miracles, they all walked down. And, you know, what do you need God to do? Well, I got migraines and people that was no problem I got a little backache that was a, no problem I asked a man a gentleman standing there very weak I said what do you need God to do and in the microphone he said I am dying with cancer and you could hear like that oh that just went who was that to give me the L don't know me I don't know I don't. but that's what the whole audience did they went oh oh pity <laughs> and, and it's like the devil jumped on my shoulder. He don't come on my shoulder. And he said, don't you dare to tell him he's going to be healed. In fact, don't even bother praying for him. This man told you he is dying with cancer. He has confessed it. 
He is dying with it. And don't you dare to pray for him and tell him he's going to be healed. As God is my witness, it felt like a ton of bricks was dumped over that audience. Defeat, depression, feeling sorry for him. And I didn't feel no anointing at all. Because, I mean, the unbelief attacked me. And all of a sudden, I never, this was incredible, wasn't it? I just began to pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in tongues. And I begin to pray. But I noticed while I was praying, I'm thinking to myself, this ain't my normal spiritual language. I'm speaking a language that I've never spoken before. But I said, it sounds, felt good, sounds good. So I kept on praying it, praying it, praying it, praying it. And I felt the unction. I laid hands on him. He falls out under the power. Gets sucked. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. God miraculously healed that man who said, I'm dying with cancer. After that service, an elderly gentleman, distinguished gentleman, walks up to me. Nice business suit on. Looked at me, he said, uh, very kind. He said, sir. I said, yes. Do you speak any languages besides English? And I'll never forget, I told him, I said, well, I speak heavenese. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, he said, he said, uh, he said, do you remember the man that was dying with cancer that you prayed for? I said, yeah. He said, did you notice anything different when you prayed in tongues? I said, yeah. I said, when I was praying in tongues, I'm thinking to myself, boy, this is like a new language, a prayer language I got. He said, well, I'm a professor at Lamar University. And he said, I speak six languages. Besides English. And he said. When you. Before you prayed for that man. God spoke. This is how he said it. God spoke through you to the spirit world. Now I checked him out with brother Treadway. Brother Treadway. Oh yeah that man's a real. He's in my church. He's a professor. He speaks all these languages. He said God spoke through you to the spirit world. And I said well what did he say? He said, he said, Lloyd, he said, you prayed perfect Latin. And you spoke to the spirit world in perfect Latin. I said, well, what did I say? He said, God spoke to the spirit world and said, I'm going to do this miracle whether you believe me or not. I'm going to do it whether you believe me or not. I'm going to do it whether you believe me or not. And that's where we are today. God's going to move whether you believe him or not. God's going to have revival in Cooksville whether you believe it or not. I'm telling you, I saw things in the spirit that are going to happen in this city. That are going to happen through this people. And he's going to do it whether you believe him or not. The blind are going to see, the deaf are going to hear, the dumb are going to talk, the crippled are going to walk, even the dead are going to be raised. Whether you believe him or not, whether you believe him or not, whether you believe him or not, he's going to move, he's going to do it, because he's going to save these people. He's going to defeat the powers of the kingdom of darkness. The world will know that Jesus lives. him or not but he invites you he invites you to participate don't you want to participate in the miracle so in a moment we're going to lift our hands and if you're not saved get saved tonight
Oh, Lloyd, I got a lot of hang-ups. I don't care. We all got hang-ups. Just get saved. Just get saved. We all got hang-ups. We're all from dysfunction. Just get saved. I'm not trying to make you into an angel. You're never going to be an angel. Just get saved. How do I get saved? Oh, I, I just, I can, I can, I can get you saved right now. I know how to do it. I can lead you through a prayer of repentance and you can get saved right in that seat where you are. So you don't have to think about it. You don't have to put it off. You don't, don't try to fix yourself. That's been your biggest hindrance. You've been your own worst enemy because you, you keep on saying, I ain't ready, I ain't ready. You're never going to be ready. What are you going to do to get ready to be saved? Well, okay. I don't care. Go get some Air Jordans. It ain't going to make you no more of a better candidate to get saved. Just get saved. You mean that easy? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, if I was you, I'd get saved here in the next five minutes. I quit thinking about it and I quit overthinking it and I just say, all right, I'm going to get saved. Because you're not promised even tonight. You're not even promised tomorrow. Were you trying to scare? Yeah, I'm trying to scare the hell out of you. Yes, yes, yes. I get heaven in you. Because the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. But I ain't playing with you. I'm not manipulating you. I'm just telling you about reality. There's people that walked out of the presence of God. That I don't need all that. And they go home. And, and they have a wreck and they die. So get saved. Now is there anybody here that say, Lloyd, I kind of like the way you presented this. But I like it. It's not religion. You just tell me like it is. I think I'd like to get saved tonight. I think I'd really like to get saved. Because if I die tonight, I don't even know if I go to heaven. So I'd like to be saved. Put up your hand. Just show it to me. Come on. Takes, that takes. Put up your hand. We're all saved. There's not one sinner. That's good. Okay. So if you're lying... Boy, oh boy, you may be dying. <laughs> Hate being in your shoes if, after an invitation like this and say, well, uh, no, it's only you and God know that. Probably backsliders here too. Humble yourself and come on back. The moment you lift your hands, that means surrender. And the moment you lift your hands, you surrender. Guess what happens? The Holy Spirit comes upon you. Because that's the signal you're given. I surrender. So God sees it and God says, all right, here's the Holy Ghost upon you. But he just doesn't want it on you. He wants it in you. So you just open up your mouth, you close your eyes, you forget about people around you and who's going to hear you and everything. You just say, Lord, I'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's a gift. It's freely given. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. And it comes, he comes in you. And then you hear these strange words in your mouth. And, and it's not English. It's not Spanish. It's, it's a heavenly language. And you just begin to speak it forth from the youngest to the oldest. Okay, you young boys and girls, receive a brand new gift of the Holy Ghost tonight. Everybody lift your hands and just receive it right now. Oh, God. I'm telling you, there's a, there, there is an incredible, there's, receive it right now. Ah, and, and yes, yes, and when you begin to speak in tongues, expect God to heal your body. Expect your body to be healed. Sodom Amanda. Expect heart trouble to, to be gone. Expect healing in Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name, yes, all over the building. That's it, that's it, that's beautiful. Oh, you got a young man. Oh, what a what an anointing. What an anointing is in this place tonight. What an anointing. Receive it. That's beautiful. All over from the front to the back. What a glorious anointing. What a glorious anointing. It's your gift. It's your prayer language. This is the beginning of a, a, of a level of expectation and manifestation from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Let the children receive it now. Fill, fill the children. Fill the moms and dads. Fill the grandfathers and the grand. That's it. Listen to yourself speak forth in tongues. Listen to you. Isn't that a beautiful? That's a heavenly language. Only God, only God understands. Romo Masaranda. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Just let it flow out of your spirit. Just let it flow out of your spirit. Let it flow like a river. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Just let it flow out of your spirit. Fill all of our beautiful children. Fill all of our beautiful children with the Holy Ghost tonight. Romo Sata. That's beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, if you want to sing in the Holy Ghost, go right ahead and just sing in the Holy Ghost. It's your prayer language. It's your song of praise to Him.
<laughs> Come here. Yep. What's your first name? Mike. Micah. That's a prophetic anointing upon you, Micah. That's why you were named Micah. Haramoshanda. Oh, glory be to God. Micah, the next three months are going to be glorious for you and your family. Financial increase, promotion. Hallelujah. Because you have been faithful. I'm going to make you a ruler of much. now the Lord's healing your wife three ailments they're not big bad but they're just ailments the Lord's healing her and wow yeah three months going to be glorious because of your dedication people who serve people who serve people who serve and your wife will be in on a great children's revival your wife will be there will be hundreds and even thousands of children I prophesy that over your wife hallelujah is she here tonight what's she doing down there? kids <laughs> wow that is incredible wow that's very humbling that touches me that touches me because if you don't have somebody to take care of the kids, sacrifice like she does, nothing can be built. Nothing can be built. But that's why God called you up tonight. To remind everybody here, every position must be filled. Every opportunity must be taken advantage of by you because there's a purpose in it wow thank you for this prophet of anointed man of God thank you wow hold on. okay I just heard something who knows Justin anybody know a Justin wave to me right now is he here is it, I think it's a he Wave to me if you know him. I see a supernatural miracle. Who is, well, I see hands raised. I'm, your granddaughter's husband. Okay, you come down, and by the time you get down here, you'll be healed too. So come on down here. <laughs> Loose the glory. Loose the glory upon this man of God. Everything I prophesy will come to pass and I see thousands of children. I'm telling you there's a mighty revival of children. I see your children. I see your children. I hear them prophesy and I see your children. I see your children worshiping and I see them performing miracles in the name of Jesus. Oh, Glory be to come on, let's give God praise because we're right there. We are right there. We are right there. Whoa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is your grandfather's husband. Granddaughters. Your grand. Okay. I'm a little tired. Yeah. <laughs> your granddaughter's husband. Hallelujah. They're newlyweds. Well, good for them. Well, good. They go to live around here. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
Well, thank you, Jesus. Well, that's right. I saw, is there somebody else who knows Justin? Come on down. Get on down here. I'm feeling after the Lord. Hallelujah. There's, there's, yes, thank you, Jesus. See, learn something tonight. Learn about waiting on God. Don't, don't let people rush you. If you feel rushed, you miss it. You miss it. You know, you just have to learn to wait. Feel after. Many times I just feel after God. I just feel, sense feel, okay? Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I guess nobody's name, Justin. Nobody's name, but Wow. So there should have been, probably should have been a Justin here tonight, right? Anybody say, yeah, he should have been here. Huh? Yes. In my spirit, I have a friend, his name is Justin, and I almost invited him. And I did not obey him. He called him. Yeah. But that's all right. Yeah. Because, Pastor, there's a whole new group of people coming. Get ready. That's one prophetic sign. Hallelujah. I knew a Justin years ago and a, a missionary friend of mine. We used to write songs together. He's in the Coast Guard now. Okay. Thank you, Lord. He's your son? Justin and Jenna. To these. to come and he started to but then he said no so tell him it's all right I know. tell him it's all right tell him god's not mad at him this is harvest time my brother Justin. see you can't you can't create this this has to be god this has to be god hallelujah just has to be God. So, in fact, I'm going to use you tonight. Come on down here. You're going to break some curses here tonight. You're a man of God. You're a man of God. You're a man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I saw, <laughs> go ahead, break it in Jesus' name. Break the curse right now. Lift your hands. Lift your hands right now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, every man and woman that's standing up here right now, they're standing in for Justin and justice. Justice. <laughs> There's more. Oh, God, of the name of Jesus, use these men of God. Use these men of God. Let them take their rightful place and break the hope. Break the hope. Break them. Rise up, man of God. Rise up, man of God. Use this woman. Save and deliver. Lord, we come against. Go ahead. That's it. Go ahead. Lay down. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, God. Yes, God. Release the glory in these households. Release the glory in these families. Release the glory of God. Release the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He said, this is for Justin and Justice. She said, I'm coming. I'm standing for my nephew tonight. He used to love Jesus, but now he, his name is Justin. And he's an atheist. Justice for Justin. Justice for Justin in the name of Jesus Christ. You old lion spirit of hell, go back to hell, the pit of hell where you come from. In the name of the Lord God Almighty, we release Justin to be delivered in his mind from this spirit of delusion, from these lion spirits. We break the chains of darkness. Wake up, wake up and see God. Wake up, wake up and cry out to God. Wake Wake up and cry out to God. We command justice.
for Justin. Stop running. Run back to Jesus. Run back to the cross in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Lord, even in the next 72 hours, even in the next 72 hours, put angels on the trail. Make angels appear to them. Make angels a prophesy to them. Give them dreams, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, we call our sons and daughters back to you. In the name of Jesus. Oh. Hala mama shanda. <laughs> and God says you and God says I'm gonna raise the dead and God says I'm gonna raise the dead God says I'm gonna raise the dead and God says this generation will see the resurrection of the dead God says this generation is going to see the dead rise. The dead will come to life. Oh, 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 oh. And God says I'm even going to raise them up in that funeral home. Even in that funeral home. Even in the funeral home. They'll come to life even in the funeral home. The funeral home, the funeral home, the funeral home. Start prophesying to that funeral home. Start prophesying to that funeral home. In the name of Jesus, start prophesying the dead to rise. Hallelujah. That's why, that's why, that's why there's a bend church. That's why you people are together. You people are together to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. You people are together. You're not here to play church. You're not here to build a religion. You are here to bring down the fire, the glory, God's power upon this earth in the name of Jesus. This city is a Jerusalem. This is a Jerusalem. This is a Jerusalem. This is an upper room. This is the place where the Holy Ghost is going to fill the house. Cloven tongues like us the fire is going to set upon you. You're going to be filled. And then the next day you're going to raise the dead. You're going to raise them up from the lameness and the crippleness. And that's what God is releasing in you tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. God says, I'm healing Mary Lee. Who's Mary Lee? Mary Lee, Mary Lee, I just heard Mary Lee. I'm healing Mary Lee. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, you're feeling it right now, Mary Lee. Feeling it right now. Feeling the healing glory right now. Hallelujah. Are you right handed? Yes, Lord. You're healthy. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Put up the other hand now. Oh, glory. You're a very wise woman. You've got the gift of wisdom. Hallelujah. You're married? Is your husband here? Oh, I'd like to see him. Well, come on down, husband. Beautiful. Lift your hands, Pastor. Spirit of the Lord says, <laughs> You will be the president of God's kingdom economic chamber of commerce. The president of it. The president of it. It will outshine everything. God says, I brought you here to teach these people how to believe. I brought you here to equip these people to do the works of the ministry. You're an apostle. You get tired, you can put your hands down. I'm just following the Holy Ghost. And your wife has the gift of discernment. She will discern. She will discern for you. She's got that gift. She's got that prophetic gift and that vision gift too. 
But I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus Christ, God said you will be the president of his kingdom chamber of commerce here. And there will be a gathering. There will be a gathering. Because you, God can trust you. God can trust you. You will, you will go and come and come and go. There's going to be incredible political revival here. I don't never. I've never even said that phrase before. I never even. But there's going to be political re revival here. God's. Uh, you're going to even prophesy to some of these people. Hallelujah! I see. I see lawyers gathering here. I just see like summits happening, and and you're going to teach and prophesy the word of God to them and teach them Bible justice and Bible law Bible law and they're going to have a backbone and they're going to have the armor of God and they're not going to be caught up into the power power struggles and everything but I'm telling you I'm telling you and 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 and, and you're even going to uh, there's there's people that are in high places even in religion even in religion that attorneys and but they've never received the power since they believed and god says i'll send you to texas i'll send you to texas and i'll send you to texas and and there will be i don't know why i keep saying that because i'll send you to texas i'll send you to texas and i'll send you to texas and you'll prophesy to that man that's a man of god but i'll baptize him in the holy ghost he's got education i'll baptize him in the holy ghost he knows law, but I'll baptize him in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory. And you will. Mm. Wow. This land will be paid off sooner than you think. thinking because there's a mighty work I see I see buildings that will be built I see retirement centers that will be built there I see I see all these they're beautiful oh they're so beautiful I see I see God's I see school of ministry schools of ministry schools of ministry not schools schools of ministry that will be built there I see entrepreneur college that will come forth kingdom kingdom leaders oh glory and in just a minute i'm about to pray for all businesses in this place and release the glory but i've got to oh, now glory i do you go to church here good you're beautiful i never said that to a man before <laughs> and i really am disappointed at myself for being so spiritual and loving right now. I don't like myself for saying that. I'm kidding. <clears throat> get the gift of wisdom, both of you do. Stay just like you are. Just stay humble. But the blessings of God are going to flow like a river to you and through you. And 2023 is going to be the greatest year of your life. Get ready. And, oh, that's right. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Just when you speak, people listen. When you both of you speak, people listen. You speak, people listen. You, you know just what to say to inspire. And that's what you do. As God says, that's what you do. You inspire. You inspire. You encourage. That's what you do. Harabo Shanta. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. God's anointing your eyes tonight. Because you, you like to use your eyes. Duh. <laughs> you like to use your eyes, though. Hallelujah. Because I see you looking through a lens. I see you looking through a lens. Yes. Keep that camera close. Amen. 
wherever it is, keep it close because God's going to show you some things. They'll be even supernatural. Supernatural. Keep it close because they'll be supernatural pictures that you will take. Supernatural. Supernatural. <laughs> glory of God. Oh, glory. I, 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 right now, I just see tumors are disappearing out of people's bodies right now. You see, that's what she's going to do. She's going to be like that person with that camera just taking it. Glory be to God. Release the glory upon this beautiful couple. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Do you receive it? Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm praying for every business man and woman right now. Lift your hands. You've got to be a visionary. Everybody who wants to have your own business, lift your hands. You've got to be a visionary. Take all the limits off of God. Take all the limits off of God. All the limits. Start writing down. Start praying to God this week about what you want to see happen in this church. This church is anointed and this pastor is anointed to break the debt off of the backs of God's people because he's got the anointing to speak it and teach it. Father, in the name of Jesus, the anointing is not taught, it's caught. We release the prosperity anointing over businesses right now. We release the prosperity anointing tenfold, sixtyfold, hundred, a thousandfold. Lord, according to their faith, so be it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, release the glory over from the front to the back over every businessman. Lord, turn them, turn businesses from 1 million to 10 million, from 10 million to 50 million, from 50 million to 100 million. Lord, from 100 million to a billion. Lord, we take all the limits off of you tonight. We think big because we're going to do big things. This is not about us, God. This is not about us building a castle. This is about us being investors in the kingdom of God. So, Lord, we can do the work that you have called us to do. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, blow their minds even this week. Even this week with new contracts. So who's, been trying to get, who's been trying to get a contract? I've been praying for God to this contract. Get it. Wave to me right now. Good. I'm going to build your faith. Who's been uh, who's been battling breaking through in your business? Wave to me right now. Okay. One of the most phenomenal things I've ever seen was in Dallas, Texas. Pam and I was ministering at a church, and we're doing a Sunday morning, a Sunday night. Sunday morning, the place broke out. Incredible miracles. Sunday night. And this was our first time to minister at that church. Where's my wife? Isn't that right, hon? You know what I'm talking about. And this is the last story I'm telling. Then I'm turning it to Pat, Pastor. But this is so powerful. <laughs> Sunday night, I called out a man. And I said, uh, never knew him, never seen him, right, huh? And I said, uh, I see you going to Mexico. This was in Dallas. 
And he, he was a very humble man, quiet. He just started to shake. And I found out later that hardly anybody in that church knew about what he was doing because he was doing it for God in secret. I said, I see you going to Mexico and I see you with a hammer and nails. Well, then he just, him and his wife just started crying so deep. Found out later that he was loading up his truck and trailer once a month, once a month, leaving Dallas and driving down into Mexico and building little houses. And nobody knew it except the pastor and a few close friends. He didn't tell anybody. He didn't want anybody to know. I said, I saw, I see you building houses. He nodded. But then I said, God is going to give you back so much greater. I said, because you went through the fire financially, didn't you? He said, yeah, yeah. He said, I uh, told us later, he was building hundreds of homes a year and money was being stolen from him and uh, he lost his business. And I said, God is going to bless you. I said, this week, and he was just starting to get back on his feet. The man made millions and millions before, and now he was just trying to break even. I said, this week, you will break your record. Right? And I said, just to show you, I said, get, do you have a wallet? He got his wallet out. And he stood there and I said, I see in the vision a business card. And it's got the word storage on it. Right? He told us later, Pastor, he said, Lloyd, he said, I knew you missed it. He said, right up till then, you were doing great. But when you said a business card, he said, I knew and I was embarrassed for you. He was a nice guy. He said, I was just hurting for you, embarrassed, because I knew there wasn't a card in there because every Sunday afternoon after morning service, I get a bunch of cards given to me and I put them in my wallet through the week and every Sunday afternoon, I dump every card out of my wallet and discard it. And he said, I did that today. He said, I took every card and discarded it. And I was embarrassed and worried. And he said, I did not want you to ask me to open up my wallet and try to find a card that said storage because I knew it wasn't there. Pam was right there. She witnessed it. I said, open up your wallet and pull a card out. And I remember, I can see he reluctantly did it. He was red because he knew there wasn't anything there. And he opened up his wallet. And I saw his eyes freeze. There was one card there. This ain't magic. This ain't psychic. This is God. And he reached in and pulled that one card out, didn't he, honey? I said the word storage was on it and he pulled it out and it said, what did it say? Ken's storage. He thought he had taken every card out. He thought there was nothing left. He was worried. That week, God turned his business and resurrected it. He sold five homes that week. This was way back years ago, and his profit for him was $86,000. God has got his hand on this church. This church is an epicenter for God's glory. You've got to believe it, pray it, dream it. Don't be afraid to prophesy it over your life. 
because of what God is doing. I love you. God bless you. Would you guys do me a favor? Would y'all let Pastor Lloyd know how much you appreciate him and Miss Pam being with us? These two great services. We appreciate him so much. Let me tell you what we're going to do tonight. I'm going to let Pastor Lloyd and his wife slip out over to the table over there so you can love on them on the way out the door. But we've not received an offering for him at all. And I'm going to bless him. We've already, as a church, we're ready to bless him, but I'm going to add to whatever you give tonight. So I'm going to ask the ushers if they'll come and just set some buckets here on the platform, and I'm going to pray over you tonight. If you're making out a check, just write it to the bend. Everything, 100%, will go to uh, Prophet Buster and to his ministry. I've had a good time just not rushing, just being in church with you guys and hanging out and just seeing what God will speak and how God will speak. Father, I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. As we give tonight to the man of God, you said if we give to a prophet, we receive a prophet's reward. Now, Lord, we can give a cup of water and we'll get a cup of water. We can give to a righteous man, get a righteous man. But Lord, there's something about that prophetic gift that is on a person's life that when we sow into that, that it brings a prophetic reward to us. We thank you for the man of God that you sent us. We thank you for the two incredible services we've had and the people that you've spoken to just confirming, Holy Spirit, that you're alive, you're well, and you're moving in the earth in these last days. We know the greatest days are ahead. Lord, I pray every a blessing over every giver in this room tonight. Bless them as they bless the man of God tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You can stand up with me. Let me just remind you, Wednesday night, 6 o'clock or 6.30, I'll be preaching the book of Revelation. We're in Revelation chapter 4. You don't want to miss that. You can come and put your gifts in the offering buckets and then you can be dismissed. Make sure you drop by the table out there and just say hello to Pastor Lloyd and his precious wife and tell them how much you appreciate them coming. So tonight, go ahead and make your way down here.